the first project is we had somebody email us from University of Oklahoma Health Sciences a few weeks ago. They emailed the RedCap inbox asking a question. They had seen our um, website and took a, took a chance and asked us if maybe we could help them with something. Um, they were wanting to know if there was a way to do uh, field validation, a field value validation using JavaScript or a regular expression. Um, so that way uh, an alert or a banner would pop up if they, if somebody entered a, an ID that didn't match the format that they were expecting. So uh, let me just show you the, the project here. So this demo, they their their format is is this. It's three zeros and a dash, and then two zeros, and then a dash, and then two more zeros. So I was able to use a regular expression and the JavaScript injector to create um, a function that would check that value. Uh, so if we put in uh, just a dummy value and I tab out of it, this pops up and tells them that the format is incorrect. But if they go back and enter um, correctly and tab out, then it goes away. So um, the first thing that I had to figure out was how to generate a regular expression for this. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with regular expressions. Um, they're basically, let me grab my my regular expression that I created. So it's a way for you to set up um, sort of a validation format for text and numbers, any values, any input values, and you can set it to where it's generic enough <clears throat> to where you can run these uh, against, you know, uh, various types of inputs. Um, and so, for example, the one here is, uh, and this is a really good website. I'm not a master at regular expressions. It actually, this is my first foray into actually building a regular expression. Uh, I've seen some of it done before, but this is the first time I've ever had to do it myself. Um, so thank you, Stack Overflow, for all that help. Uh, this site is really nice because it kind of walks you through uh, everything that you're building. So here, uh, this zero through nine in the brackets, that's saying that I want a single character, and this explains it here, a single character that is between uh, zero and nine, so a number. And then the, the curly braces with the three means that I want this token to appear through exactly three times. Um, so in the cases of regular expressions, this is actually fairly uh, easy and straightforward. So then the next thing is I want a dash. So it says here, it just matches the character, dash, and then the same thing is I want a numerical value that's two digits and then a dash and the numerical value that's two digits. So this is the kind of stuff that you would use if you had like email addresses or, you know, complex inputs that you want to validate, um, things like that. So then and, and you can build them in a multiple uh, different languages. Um, so this one is for JavaScript. And then so I grab that value. And then. Um, what I did was, uh, the next thing is I, I used the character limit action tag for this field because I'm sure there's a way in regular expression to wrap that expression and say that I want this validation here to um, only be a certain length. Because right now you can see here, like if I test my expression, here it says that I have a match, which is good. But then if I keep typing, it says I have a match <laughs> because it's finding that string within this string. So rather than, since I'm not an expert in regular expressions, instead of trying to figure out how to uh, mess with this to where it limits the number of characters I can put in, um, I'm just using RedCap's built-in action tag of the character limit to set that. So um, 
this by using this format, they can only enter nine characters, which is the full length of, of that ID. <clears throat> so I'm using that to limit that. And then I'm using the JavaScript injector to perform the, the comparison and, and show or hide the banner. So um, the banner actually is just a descriptive text and it's set to hidden by default. So if we go to a new record, it won't show up. But what I'm doing, and I'll show you the code here that'll explain. Um, let me make this a little bigger so you guys can see. So what I'm saying is that I'm creating a, a, a new constant called regex, and in it, I'm putting in this, this regular expression um, that I've created, and that's what I'm gonna use for comparison. And then here, I'm grabbing the input. So this input box here, and I'm performing this, this function here whenever I lose, whenever this input loses focus. So if the person's typing in here and they hit tab and it goes to the next field, or if they click out of it, um, so it captures both of those. So anytime they leave the field, either way, it's gonna run this function. And what this function does is it's grabbing the value, the this is a special case here, it's called this, it's, it's you know, we're in this input. And so JavaScript knows that I'm in that input and I want the value of that input. So it's grabbing that and it's putting it in a variable um, that I can use later. <clears throat> and then here I'm just saying, if this value is not null or not empty and the test is false. So um, it's gonna check if there's a value here and then it's going to run this test, which is a, a, a function that's built into jQuery uh, specifically to compare regular expressions against something. So I'm testing this string, uh, which is a value that I put in, uh, I'm testing it against this regular expression. So if it's false, meaning they don't match, I'm going to remove the class of hidden from this banner, which means it'll pop up. If, if I focus out of the field, if I leave the input field <clears throat> and this doesn't pass, so either this is blank or this is true, which means it passes, then it's gonna either add the class or just leave the class. So I can show you how that works here. Uh, if we go back to the, the dashboard here. Um, and if I just like, so let's say I add a new record, uh, because this is blank, the value is is null, is an empty string. This doesn't show up, but it's and if I tab out of it, it doesn't show up. Um, so if I enter a dummy value and then I tab out of it, now it pops up, and and we can go to the inspect tab here, and let me bring that down, so we can see it. So if I inspect on here. This is the, the banner, and right now there's no class on it, and we can, it always takes me a moment to find. So here's, you can see here the for the character limit, this is how the action tags work in, um, <clears throat> in RedCap, is that it puts this action tag as a class value, which then there's some JavaScript and all that other stuff behind the scenes that, that runs on those uh, like for this action tag specifically for char character limit. But down here, there should be one for at hidden, but because we took it off, so it's being displayed now, it's no longer being shown here. But if I go back and I enter a value, oops. and I tab out of it, now it's gone. If I go back here, now you can see that that, that hidden action tag has been added. So we're using JavaScript here to either remove the class or add the class, depending on if we want to show um, that that value or that banner. Now, if we wanted to, we don't have to have this as we don't have to have all this here. We could just have an alert that says, um, you know, it'll pop up and just say like, hey, uh, you know this format is invalid. And then you don't have to worry about adding or removing the classes. It's just a banner, it's just an alert that pops up. Um, and I could probably just do that real quick. Let me show you, let me get the value here and then I'll just, 
So if I so if this fails, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in an alert, and my typing might be slow because I'm I'm wounded. Uh, cut my finger earlier this week, and now I'm typing with kind of one and a half hands. Um, it was a guacamole accident. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So if we put this alert in, and then we don't have to have an else here because we're not, um, we don't have to capture the other uh, function. And I'm, the nice thing about this console is I can actually just go over here and just put this in. So I don't even have to mess with um, putting it in my JavaScript. And then if I put, uh, if I tab out of this, it should pop up. So you can see here, youth ID format is incorrect. And then this will still work. So if I do, yeah, so you can see here that because I haven't altered the JavaScript in the actual injector, this is still working. And then if I do test again, it's going to alert both. I'm going to get the alert and then I'm going to get the banner. So if you wanted to try it with the banner, um, you just have to put an alert in there and they could just pop up. This is more of a, the reason I like the banner instead of the alert is because it stays there until you fix it. Whereas the alert, you can just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can click it and nothing else happens. The only downside to having this is if you, if you're like, let's say you're doing validation on a lot of fields, you would have to make a banner for each one of those fields, or you would have to do complex branching logic that would it would only show up if all of those fields were you know matched or didn't match and so it's a little more complicated um and in that case you may want to just do an alert but it all depends on on you know what you want to do you have some options um does anybody have any questions about that one i do yep um have you uh it would be nice if that was incorrect if it no longer provided you with a save and exit form or you couldn't save the form or something like that. Is that? Yeah, there might, there, there's probably a way to do that where you could either disable these buttons uh, or hide them. And I, and that's something I can, I can try. Uh, let me make a note of that. Cause that, yeah, that does sound good. Cause then you can't even get out of it. Um, yeah. It's one thing to show the message is another thing to force the format, which I, I I love what you've done, but to take it to the next level, you'd want to not let somebody enter the wrong thing in there. Yeah, yeah, and there could you know there's a couple of ways around that where you could um, you could also redirect them back to the field so they couldn't click on any other fields. Um, yeah. it would just loop through and whenever they fail, it just would put the focus back on that. Um, you know, but, and, and they would probably still be able to click save, but yeah, I think that's a good point. I'll try that to see if I can hide or disable the buttons. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Carlos asked, can we make a yeah. shot people if they enter the wrong info? I'm, um, lo I'm looking at that. I thought that was funny. That would be nice. Yeah. Uh, Although it would make testing, uh, it would make me testing it on my end a, a little more painful. Yeah, definitely. Even so, if it, even if you did have uh, the mess a message that said you'll not be able to proceed, and you put in the loopback function, that would at least act the same as allow you know keeping them from being able to save your form, something along those lines, because. Because it's great to catch it, but it's better to stop them. 